Welcome to the second video in the series on semi-retirement. And this one's one of my favorite topics. It's all about taxes. And I think taxes are actually one of the big advantages to semi-retirement. And I hope to convince you of that in this video by just telling you some of the techniques that we're using. And the most important one by far is called the saver's credit. And there's a few different versions of it, and you can look it up yourself on the IRS website, but the one that I'm the most interested in is if you're single, you can earn up to 19000 per year and pay no federal income taxes. If you're married, the number is 38000 per year, and it, it just deducts all of it as long as you contribute to a retirement account that year. So this entire video, most of it is going to be talking about the techniques that we do to get our adjusted gross income at exactly 38000 per year. No more, no less. So we have four different tools. Two of them are used to push our income up in case we make less than 38000 per year. And two of them can push the income down if we make more than that much. And if you saw the last episode and looked at the spreadsheet that we have, we don't actually earn $38,000 per year from our labor. That's not the plan. So we're probably going to have to push the income up. And one of the techniques we can use for that is capital gains harvesting. And the idea is pretty simple. If you have some taxable investments that have grown in value, you just sell them so that you can realize those gains and then you immediately buy it again. So you're continuing to be invested in the same thing, but... The gains are no longer just on paper, they exist in the real world. So in December of this year, we're tracking our income really carefully, and if we need to push it up, that's one way that we can do it. One other detail is there's a difference between long-term capital gains and short-term capital gains, and generally long-term capital gains are better for paying less taxes. But for us, our situation's kind of unique, we don't actually care. We already pay zero taxes, so I don't have to pay attention to whether the taxes are long-term or short-term, which is a really nice advantage to the strategy. A second thing we can do to push the income up is we can do Roth IRA conversions, where you change your traditional IRA to a Roth IRA, whatever amount of funds that you want. And uh, that's a really important part of the long-term strategy. If you do a Google search for... Roth IRA conversion ladder. That's a very popular strategy in the FI community for trying to decrease your overall tax burden. And we're using that strategy a bit too. And we can get the ball rolling on those IRA conversions right now. Um, and all this stuff has to be very carefully documented. So we're going to, in December, if we need to push our numbers up, we got to do it before the calendar year ends. Uh, we have to keep track of when those things occur because after exactly five years, you're allowed to access those funds if you need them. But yeah, get the Roth conversions going. If we need to push the numbers down, there's two techniques we can do for that. The first one is the health savings account. So we now have a high deductible insurance plan and that allows us to get a health savings account, which is this amazing thing where all of our health expenses are completely tax free and you can invest the money. I'll do an entire episode on health insurance because that's a huge one that a lot of people have been asking about. But I think the health savings account, it's like 6,500 if you're married per year that you can throw in there. It's quite a bit to help us push the number down to 38,000. And the last technique that we can use is contributing to our traditional IRA, but um, I'm not going to do that this calendar year. You're allowed to do that actually when you file your taxes and have it count for the previous calendar year. So we haven't touched, we haven't contributed anything to our IRAs yet this year. What I'm going to do is try to get the numbers as close to 38,000 as I can. But if they're a little bit over when it's time to file our taxes, I'm going to contribute to IRAs to push those numbers down. And that's a lot of flexibility. Between maxing out the health savings account and the IRAs, the IRAs are about $11,000 in tax-free space, and uh, the HSA is something like 6000 So you're looking at like, I think it's about $55,000 
between two people that can be federally completely tax-free. It's a very powerful strategy, and it, I think it's saving us thousands. Um, and we can r run the strategy for years and years. I don't foresee us paying any federal income taxes for the next 10 or 15 years because we're just going to keep using this strategy. Um, one other small detail. Th this is one of those tiny things that might save you a couple thousand bucks, but I think it's worth looking at, is... I think when you transition from full-time work to semi-retirement, you should strategically do that in the middle of a calendar year. So I ended up quitting my, um, I guess I would call it my real job, back in April. And I kind of did that on purpose because it allowed me to earn a pretty good chunk of money but still be able to push my way down into that $38,000 range uh, with some of the trickery that I was talking about. If I quit in December, you'd probably make too much money and you'd end up owing some taxes. And if you quit in like January, you're, you're just missing out on some tax-free space, I think. So personally, I think quitting in the middle of the year is more efficient. It's generally better to make some money for a bunch of years than it is to make a lot of money all at once. That's where the heavy tax burden comes in. And quitting in the middle of the year can help take advantage of that, where you can have high income for a period and still pay crazy low taxes on it. Only the only other thing I want to add is some of the side hustles that I found. A lot of them are delivery driving for an app of some sort. And one thing that's really cool with those is you get to deduct 55 cents per mile for all of the driving that you do. And I track that pretty carefully. There's an app called Everlance that really helps with it. I'll probably make another episode on the details of the side hustles that I'm doing. But the 55 cent per mile deduction is very generous because the best I can tell, it only actually costs us about maybe 15 cents per mile to push our cars around. We just have very efficient, cheap cars as any semi-retired person should. And so basically, we're deducting more for our driving expenses than what those expenses actually are. So that's another technique to help keep the income down. And yeah, the tax advantages are just very substantial, I think. And it helps to make the path a little smoother. Thanks for watching.